Hey everybody, my name is Joe Piverunas. I'm the founder and managing editor of Nanalyze. We're a boutique media and research firm that covers disruptive tech investing for a broad audience of retail and institutional investors across the globe. Today we're going to talk about value traps and SPACs and how to spot them. Before we get into that, I wanted to talk about an interesting concept called Veblen goods. So economics is a dreadfully boring topic, but there are some interesting tidbits to pull out. And one is that some are quite obvious. So when the price of a good goes up, people will seek out substitutes and demand for the good will typically fall. So there's a relationship there between price increasing and demand falling. Well, there's an exception to that. It's called Veblen goods. And that's when the demand increases as the price increases. And that's not very intuitive, but that's the case with a lot of goods that are purchased by the ultra wealthy. And here's an example of a Veblen good out of Napa Valley called Screaming Eagle. So for no particular reason, this wine, it's one of the Napa Valley Colt wines, sells for upwards of $4,000 a bottle. And the reason that it's in such high demand is speculated to be like many Colt wines because of the price. So this was actually a auction that was held over at VinoVest and these bottles sold out quite quickly. So there's a demand for very, very expensive goods. And as the price increases, often the demand will increase as well. Now, when it comes to stocks, you see sort of a similar psychological phenomenon. So if the price of a stock falls because the market's going through a downturn, many investors will go concerned and they don't consider it to be discounted. They think of it as a bad apple, right? Well, the stock price is going down. It must not be a good company. In a similar fashion, when you see prices of stocks increase, and this happens on Robinhood a lot because they'll showcase the top 10 performing stocks, investors will see that and they'll try to chase performance. So as the price of a good increases, they find it more appealing. So you see that same sort of phenomenon take place in the stock market. Now, smart investors, when they see the price of a stock fall, they see that as an advantage and they use it as an opportunity to add shares. Now, you have to be careful, even if you're a uh, prudent investor, that you don't fall prey to what's called a value trap. And this is when a poor investment appears to be a bargain when, in fact, the company is having financial instability or has very little growth potential. Now, it's very hard to spot value traps when there are no revenues, and that's why we don't invest pre-revenue. Now, when you're looking at how to value companies, one way that you can do that is by looking at what the price of the shares are today compared to what institutional investors paid at the time the company had an IPO. So we provided three examples here. We did an article on these three companies. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. And we looked at how they're trading at a fairly sharp discount to what institutional investors paid not too long ago when they had the initial public offering. Now, the problem that we have with SPACs is that they're not conducted through an initial public offering. And that's one of the problems, that's one of the original criticisms we had was that SPACs benefit everybody except retail investors. So what you can do with SPACs is you can go and find the last round that they were funded by institutional investors take that valuation and compare it to the market cap today. So what we did is we went over to PitchBook, the very kind people over there uh, procured data for us so that we could do some analysis around the 90 different SPACs that we've covered in disruptive technology. So we took the valuation data that was available and we plugged it into our list of names and then we compared today's market cap to the valuation at the date of the last round. You can see that in this table. So if we take IonQ, for example, third down, third row, they had a series C in June of 2020. And at that time, the company was valued by sophisticated institutional investors at $130 million. Well, today it's worth supposedly $2.8 billion. That's a premium of 2000% over what institutional investors valued it at before. So we've taken the top 10 out of that list and here they are today. So what we can then start to do is say, all right, well, these may be overvalued, but what 
do they look like compared to when the SPAC debuted? So what we've done here is we've taken the same 10 companies and we look to say, what does the share price look today? Since all SPACs, probably the best thing about SPACs is they all debuted at $10 a share. So it's very easy to see which ones are crumbling and a lot are. So we've listed the um, to-date performance for each one of these SPACs. Now, what you'll also notice here is that half of these are in very risky domains, quantum computing. If the most advanced physicists in the world can't explain to you what quantum computing is, how do you expect you're gonna understand it in any way, shape or form? So the only proxy for quantum computing success is revenues. And we've said that very firmly. And what you have here are two companies, IonQ and Rigetti, that don't have very meaningful revenues yet. So uh, those two companies are quantum computing. We also have electric vehicles, and you're probably all aware of the debacle that happened in the electric vehicle space that we continue to warn about because many of these companies don't actually have revenues. And as we said earlier, it's very tough to spot a value trap when you don't have revenues. Now, when we do have revenues, what we can do is look at something we call the simple valuation ratio. This is market cap divided by annualized revenues, where annualized revenues is last quarter times four. That gives you a valuation ratio, and we use this regularly. Any company with a valuation ratio over 40, we consider to be excessively valued. And today, most of the companies, they say many companies that we saw that were excessively valued have now floated back down to valuations, let's say, simple valuation ratio under 10. Well, look at how high the valuation ratio is for these companies. Now, the three that on the bottom there that don't have revenues, as we said before, stay away from companies that don't have revenues. They haven't proved product market fit. They haven't demonstrated traction. For all practical purposes, we don't invest in companies that don't have revenues. Now, the rest of the names on this list, well, Matterport has the lowest ratio, and that's certainly a company we've looked at with interest. Um, we actually have all these companies right now listed as an avoid, but if you had to pick some that were interesting, Matterport would certainly be in that list. And we've written a piece detailing how their revenue streams are 30% uh, hardware last quarter and they're moving away from hardware. And there's some questions around whether or not their, how, let's say how durable their SaaS model is when you can sign up with a credit card. So. You can read that research piece and and uh, see what our, our findings were there. Some other names of interest. IonQ is a very promising company. We've It also has a, a cult following that will uh, attack you if you don't drink their Kool-Aid. But um, we've published a video on that. You can see a lot of the comments from the cheerleaders. This is a company that's very highly valued. They're talking about how they expect related revenues. So, you know, promising, but we need to see revenues as a proxy for success in quantum computing. The same holds true for Rigetti. Velo 3D has been asked about by quite a few readers and subscribers. So we'll look to cover them soon on the heels of our piece on desktop metal. Other than that, what you can do is um, take a look through this slide. This shows excerpts from our tech stock catalog. So we've put together a list of 400 different stocks and put it into a catalog along with quite a few data points. And one of those points would be what we've called Nanalyze Notes. And that's just a few sentences on how we feel about each one of these companies. And there are also links to our latest research that you can easily access. In this catalog, you'll find of the 400 and some odd stocks, 90 of those are SPACs and there's a filter so you could very quickly filter on SPACs. That's what we've done here to show you the, the um, uh, let's say conclusions that we've arrived at or the latest, the last time we looked at these companies, um, what we had to say. So just to conclude here, of the 90 SPACs in our catalog, 81% are below $10 a share, over a third or more than 50% off. You don't need to watch out for value traps and one way to do that is by looking at the pre-SPAC valuations and compare, comparing them to market cap today. You can use our simple valuation ratio. And as we said before, anything that's pre-revenue is best left avoided. Now, the other side of this coin is that you can then start to look at companies that had a pre-SPAC valuation that's presently higher than the market cap is today and that may represent opportunities to buy quality assets on the cheap. So 
We'll be looking at that in a future presentation. Thanks very much to PitchBook for providing the data we needed to conduct this analysis. Thank you very much for your time. Make sure you subscribe to the video. Questions and comments uh, on YouTube, please. We can address those and everybody can benefit from it. Thank you so much for your time. Much appreciated.